Scientists recently quantum entangled two objects that contain more than a trillion spins each. This is particularly amazing due to the sheer size of the objects. Normally, quantum entanglement occurs between two atoms. Large objects cannot be entangled because they house too much thermal noise and interactions between atoms, which prohibits the formation of an entangled state. It is not trivial to make large objects behave in a quantum mechanical way at all, let alone to be able to entangle them. To do this, scientists had to convince the atoms to collectively respond quantum mechanically. They did this by taking two micrometer-sized mechanical drums whose position and momentum could be described as quantum states when cold. This was not only an accomplishment in precision fabrication, but a real testament to the advances in quantum science today. Here, the scientists had to use several techniques to cool and entangle the drums, which might lead to a whole new cast of quantum interfaces. Let's discuss how they managed to perform this feat. Quantum entanglement is a phenomenon in quantum mechanics that occurs when two or more quantum objects have interacted in such a way that their states are now completely correlated. Normally, when scientists are performing entanglement measurements, they are entangling the spins of two atoms, say, two electron spins. Each electron has a quantum property called spin, which is called this because it mathematically behaves the same as an angular momentum or a spinning object, the value that this spin takes depends on how you measure it, but here let's just simplify it and say it's either spin up or spin down. Now by forcing the two electrons to interact in a specific way, their spin states can become entangled. At this point, they are in a superposition of spin states, so we don't know whether they are either spin up or spin down. If we measure one of the spins to be in spin up, then because they were entangled, we know that the other one must be in spin down. This is independent of the distance between the two spins and has been tested time and time again. But this doesn't only work with spins, it works with any quantum states that can interact, be it photons, phonons, molecules, or even drums. Anything that can form a coherent quantum state for long enough can be entangled with another quantum state. So, how did these scientists manage to entangle two microdrums? First, they had to fabricate the drums themselves, which are thin, 100 nanometer thick aluminium sheets that are 20 micron long and 14 micron wide, which in total weighs around 70 picograms. The drums are suspended by small connectors that help to separate the drum from the substrate. This allows for the placement of an aluminium plate underneath the drum that forms a parallel plate capacitor between the drum and the plate. Now, as the drum moves up and down, the distance between the two capacitor plates changes, and thus a different capacitance is measured. This is fundamental to how the drum was controlled and read out through microwave control. The combination of the spiral resonator and the drum capacitors can be treated as a cavity that has a resonant frequency that depends on the beating of the drums. Therefore, as the frequency of the drum beating changes, so does the resonance of the cavity. Then, to interact with the cavity, microwaves were applied along a nearby electrical line, which then couples into the spiral resonator. Scientists could use this microwave interaction to interact with the drums directly. In order to entangle the drums, first they need to cool the drums down to extremely cold temperatures. The drums were already quite cold, as the measurements were performed in a dilution fridge, which has a temperature around 7 millikelvin. But thermal energy is particularly bad for this system, as the way the entanglement is formed relies on phonons, which are lattice vibrations that are related to the temperature of the material. That is, hotter means more phonons, and thus more ways to lose the entanglement. So scientists were able to cool the drums down more by applying microwaves at a slightly lower frequency than the drum resonance. This helps to remove this additional temperature. Once the drums were cold, Scientists managed to entangle the two drums by applying a microwave frequency that lay in between the two drums' beating frequency. This microwave pulse generates correlated photon-phonon pairs that can be shared between the two drums, which when performed correctly results in two drums being entangled. 
In order to prove that the two drums were indeed entangled, they need to perform measurements called entanglement witness. This is where they effectively measure the correlation between the drum's position and momentum. If the correlations were stronger than a certain threshold, then we can say with some certainty that the objects were indeed entangled rather than just classically correlated. Here you can see what the correlation of what the position and the momentum of the drums looks like before and after entanglement. This correlation does indeed show the states were in fact entangled, which is quite an amazing feat. In the future, massive entangled quantum systems like this may be able to be, serve as a node for hybrid quantum networks, acting to couple other quantum systems with an intermediate quantum state to help to propagate the entanglement further. This type of system may also be useful for exploring quantum teleportation and other quantum mechanics of large systems in general. It is a very exciting work with the promise of more exciting things to come. Thanks for watching, have fun, see you next time.